she wearing that thing on her head? Hmm? Oh, it's a hijab. She wears it because she's Muslim. But I don't understand why. So women who follow Islam wear it as a sign of modesty and privacy from unrelated men. But I don't understand the point. It's just a part of her religion. That's all. She should take it off. But I just told you she wears it for religious purposes. I don't care. I want to see her hair. That, that's not, what? I'm not a man, so she should show me. She doesn't have to show you her hair, but I want her to. She doesn't know you anything. And by the way, even if she wasn't religious, she could wear whatever she wants. Well, it makes me uncomfortable. I want to see her hair. All right, at this point, you're just being Islamophobic. She wears it for religious purposes, and that's her decision. And even if she wasn't wearing it for religious purposes, she could wear whatever she wants. You're not entitled to anything just because you want to. And you're discriminating against her religion by thinking that you are. Don't ever comment on things they can't change. In less than 30 seconds, I'll give you some examples today. Like their weight, or their height, or their eye shape, or scars. Don't comment on their teeth unless there's spinach in them. I'm talking about being a decent human being. Diamonds blank. Wait, I gotta wait for the announcer. One second. Finish him! Bet, alright. Why in the fuck are you talking about a woman's glow up process knowing damn well you look like one of the enemy turtles from Mario? Like, you know your glow up ain't finished, right? Your shit has been delayed like a Delta flight. Why the fuck are you speaking? Better question. Who in the fuck is throwing you pussy to where you could be so picky over who's wearing fake lashes or not? Let's ask the audience, shall we? No one! No one! No one! No one! No one. There it is. And that concludes this episode of me being a raging prick. Well, ladies, if you didn't want to get pregnant, then you shouldn't have had sex. Plain and simple. Oh shit, what did I think of that? Oh shit, all right, ladies, ladies, yeah, yeah? All right, unless you want babies, we can't have sex with men anymore. Cool? Cool. Wasn't that hard? I I'm, I'm glad you understand. Yeah, man, makes perfect sense. So, uh, how are you gonna cope with your celibacy? Well, I'm a man and kind of baby, so I'm gonna keep having sex. Oh? With who? My girlfriend. Not gay. Does she have one of those? Well, I mean, like, how many babies are you guys planning on having? Oh god, no, no I'm not- I'm not ready for kids. <sighs> Sorry, man, but, uh, if you don't want to have babies, you can't have sex. Them's the rules. Things that don't make fucking sense thanks to the patriarchy. When ladies do not shave their armpits or their legs and occasionally their upper lip, the male species will say, Ugh, gross. That's disgusting. Meanwhile, in Penis Town, we can have literal pubic hair on our face and it's seen as cool, sexy, hip. Trendy. Men, check your watches. Most of us are not on Pacific Standard Time. No, we're on fucking double standard time. But then again, maybe this makes sense. Perhaps the reason some men are so prone to act like dick is because the same hair that's down there is also up here. If you expect your female friends to give you sex for being nice to them, I've got You're not a nice guy. Next up, we have menstrual products. How do we handle those? I feel like we should make them free. Nah, those are a luxury item. Uh, excuse me? It's a luxury for women to access those things. Let me tell you, I'm not a woman, but I bet any woman who has a period could agree that it is not a luxury. It is not a week-long vacation they get. It is something that you wouldn't even be able to handle. Whatever, dude. Next. Okay, how about birth control? We should at least make that free. What? No way, gotta make them pay for that too. Well, then you're gonna have to wear a condom. But that doesn't feel nearly as good. Then if you get a woman pregnant, since you won't give her free access to birth control and you refuse to wear a condom, you're gonna have to pay for her abortion. She can't get an abortion. We can't just go around killing babies. Sir, I'm gonna tell you this in the kindest way possible. Women are not your toys. You don't get to control them or their bodies. How about we let women decide what happens to their bodies? Then you have the audacity to say, it doesn't feel good. What the fuck is wrong with you? Then you get mad when they say kill all men. I really wish all men were dead right now. If you're really about your money, think about it like this, ready? Say you're a girl, right? You have a pad 
that you can just put in your underwear to make sure that you don't bleed through your pants and have the embarrassment of bleeding through your pants. Or you can take a plastic tube that's usually filled with cotton or rylon or whatever, um, stick it inside your body, uh, and then walk around with that inside your body for the rest of the day while you're bleeding and having stomach cramps and probably the worst pain in your life. Uh, so, so, so which is, which, which would be more comfortable? I'm going to wait for an answer. I wanted to address this also because I think you're right. Feminism is a movement for equality and some people don't make it out to be that way. Real feminists talk about men's issues as well. And the reason why I don't come on here and say kill all men is because it doesn't help the true feminist agenda and I feel like it's counterproductive in a way. But let me just explain to you why it's being said. And no, I'm not justifying it at all. This joke is in direct response to the rape all women jokes and the jokes objectifying women. It's basically to flip the joke around and demonstrate how extreme and messed up the rape all women types of jokes are. Also, there's one huge difference here. The rape all women jokes and the objectifying women jokes kinda don't feel like jokes because they tend to actually happen a lot. Women don't actually want to kill all men. Or put men in cages. And given the obvious power difference in our society, it's not like women could actually do that. This joke is being made out of fear. And I can guarantee you right now, if you respect women, she's not talking about you. She's talking about the fact that an overwhelming amount of men in our society don't share that same respect. Which sucks because they ruin it for all of you. And no, I'm not saying it's right. I'm just offering you that perspective. Here, in case you haven't noticed it, there is a war going on out there, and you women started. Oh, no, we did not. But that is a typical male attitude. Now, the truth is that we women haven't had enough power or money or confidence to start much of anything, but we sure as heck get the blame for everything. I'll tell you something else. I love men. I love this one. But you cannot ignore history. And history has shown that, in general, it has been the men who have done the raping and the robbing and the killing and the warmongering for the last 2,000 years. It has been the men who have done the pillaging and the beheading and the subjugating of whole races into slavery. It has been the men who have done the lawmaking and the money-making and most of the mischief-making. So if the world isn't quite what you had in mind, you have only yourselves to thank. <laughs> I knew it would happen. Ooh, it's hot. So, I was checking out, and the lady kind of snickered, and I kind of looked at her, and then she goes, did you let a girl paint your nails? And I was like, no, ma'am, I like them. And then she laughs again, and I just want to know what makes it funny or weird. 2020. Let's uh, normalize guys painting their nails, wearing jewelry, caring about style and how they dress. And how about emotions? That's a really great one. Guys have emotions and can show them too. So that's all. That's my little uh, PSA. Have a good day. I'm impressed today. Ah, oh my god, rape, rape this, that sexual assault, the table. The only dudes who say this shit are A, seeking attention that they're not going to get, or B, have been in the position of the table, except they actually did something wrong. So, sir, which are you? Do you need me to keep talking about the uniforms? Or are you just going to shut the fuck up? Because I can keep talking about it. Let's go. I didn't even care to pay attention to what I was saying before. They said, men don't sexualize women. Literally, what are you talking about? I understand that ignorance is bliss. But it becomes an issue when you literally just are not fucking listening. Men literally sexualize childbirth. We're supposed to give birth in a squatting position, but some doctor thought it was hot to watch the baby come out. So he made women lay on their back so that he could get off. And you really think that men wouldn't sexualize an entirely female dominated industry? Plenty of men on their own saying that the only reason we watch those sports is because they're hot. Not because they're actually playing a sport that takes talent and dedication and discipline. Because they're hot. How fucking ignorant are you? Are you really that ignorant? Or are you just that fucking stupid? And are you looking down my shirt right now? Or are you actually fucking listening to me? Notice the issue. Stop ignoring it and pretending like it's not there and blaming women for it. You fucking dunce. <laughs> I think gay marriage is okay and racism is bad. That's bullshit. Debate me.
No. You just gonna not debate me? Hey. Hi, right, what's up? Why aren't you debating me right now? Oh, I don't want to. You can't just not debate someone because you don't want to. Dude, you're really good at snapping. Why aren't you debating me right now? Why do I have to debate you? Because I want you to. Ah, see, there's your mistake. I don't actually owe you anything. So I win? We did not debate, so you could not have won. But you didn't argue, so my point is correct. My point is correct, and I will not debate this. Why won't you debate me? Because I don't want to. It's an interesting question. So the comparison here is that if Black Lives Matter really loved America, they wouldn't want it to change. Just like you love your wife and you wouldn't change a thing about her. Let's imagine in this comparison that your wife is ill. I hope she's not, but just for that. You just found out that your wife is very ill and she has had a sickness in her bones for a long time. It's made her bones weak, it's compromised her immune system, and it causes her daily pain. And it's curable. Now, do you want your wife not to change so much that you don't want her to go to the doctor? You don't want her to get better? Are you also in love with the part of her that's making her ill and that's causing her pain? Or do you take her to the doctor so they can help fix those problems and they can help her be healthier and happier so they can help her manage the pain or take it away? That's the question right now. Do we recognize the parts of our nation that are making us sick and causing people pain? And do we try to fix them? Or do we let the sickness stay because we're just so scared of changing? 